Welcome to eCritical. This is the first of a series of introductory lectures uh, that I've produced as part of our online training that it unofficially will guide you through the use of our new critical care information system. This video is not intended to replace the uh, required teaching uh, videos and online learning that Alberta Health Services requires. Uh, but it serves as an introduction more geared towards uh, the day-to-day -day activities that the average uh, clinician will need to know in order to use the system effectively. Now for these videos, there is a lot of material that we'll need to cover, and I'll try and walk you through this over the course of the next uh, hopefully 30 minutes or less. Uh, we'll begin with covering the, the uh, essentials of getting onto the system, both uh, while you're working in the intensive care unit or CCU uh, and also while you're using your own personal computer or if you are um, in the uh, off-site and logging in remotely. Uh, then I'll walk you through all of the nuances of using the, the system to give you an introduction into um, playing with it. And, and realistically, I think the best way for you to learn how to use the system is to just simply get your feet wet and uh, play around with it. You, uh, the, by the nature of the fact that uh, as clinicians we're not entering a lot of data, uh, it's very hard for, for you to break the system if you um, decide to, to take a look around. So don't be afraid to play and, uh, and see what you can, uh, see what you can uh, find and discover on your own. We'll then go through some of the things that we need to document as part of our day-to-day uh, -day work, starting with the procedures um, that are performed in the ICU, and then a, a couple of uh, uh, routine uh, forms that need to be filled in, uh, both on admission and then occasionally, depending on the patient's uh, uh, underlying diagnosis, uh, daily um, uh, charting for the uh, purposes of severity scores. Um, then a common challenge we'll have is, uh, is off, there will often be um, charts that you forgot to get completed on time and you'll get a, a nice little email saying that you need to finish some charting off and I'll show you how to uh, find those to head off getting those types of, uh, types of emails. And then I'll conclude with a, a quick overview of the death summary, which is the uh, last form that uh, you'll need to fill out on a patient. Okay, so to start, we are going to kind of talk quickly about how to sign in to eCritical when you're in the ICU and you're using one of the ICU computers. All you have to do is go to any computer in the ICU that is um, uh, run by HS, and uh, on the desktop or in the toolbar, you should see this happy little icon and this is the link that will take you to uh, eCritical, which is also known as Metavision. If you double click on this, then this login screen will appear. Logging in is straightforward. All you do is uh, enter in your HS username, which is the same username you use when uh, logging into your e HS email, if you use that or into the PAC system, uh, or if you're in uh, uh, SCM or even Meditech. Password should also be the same as your AHS password. And then select the department, or in this uh, more accurately term, the, the uh, unit that you are uh, working in uh, from the drop-down menu uh, here. Next, I'm going to cover how to log in to uh, eCritical using a personal computer while you're within the HS network. Um, this is a little bit more involved, and so it's important that you pay attention. As initially, you're going to need to do a little bit of work in order to uh, in order to get access. Typically, the people who are using their own personal computers are using a Macintosh. Um, or are using a laptop of their own, uh, but they're plugged into the uh, wired network or they're using uh, HS restrictors, some of the wireless uh, HS network uh, uh, service. In order to access eCritical from a non 
uh, Alberta Health Services computer, you need to download a, an application called Citric Receiver. All of our networks run um, eCritical through a Citrix server, which is um, essentially a, uh, a program that allows the eCritical to run on a computer distant to where you are. And, uh, and Citric Receiver is the application that allows you to, uh, to log into that, uh, to that computer that's actually running uh, eCritical. So the first step you're going to need to do is you're going to need to download Citric Receiver. The easiest way to do that is to uh, enter, uh, just do a Google search and just uh, type in Citric Receiver and, uh, um, and go to the, uh, um, uh, the Citric website. If you already have downloaded Citric uh, because you're using NetCare or some other application that requires a Citric server, then the next few steps may uh, be very slightly and if you're having problems, uh, please just give me a shout. Once you're at the Citric website, um, depend if you're using the computer that you're planning on uh, using to log into eCritical, then it will automatically detect uh, which version of Citric Receiver you require and just simply click the download button uh, as you see here. I'm not going to go through the process of, of downloading and installing uh, a program on your computer as there are a variety of different uh, uh, computers out there and uh, I don't, uh, don't want to get into those kind of details. I assume that you know how to uh, download and install programs uh, onto your own computer. Now once you have uh, downloaded and installed uh, Citric Receiver, uh, open the application uh, in, on your computer and the first uh, first screen you should see is a login to uh, my apps uh, uh, screen the, uh, the 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 information you need to enter is the domain and your username as well as your password the domain is uh, you need to enter in first is healthy with a uh, backwards slash as you can see here. It's important that you uh, put that on uh, and, uh, that as your domain so that you can uh, in order to uh, successfully log in. After the backwards slash then you enter your username as, as I've mentioned previously the same username you would use for um, all of your other logins through, um, through HS. And then next, uh, enter your password as you'd use for your AHS network uh, in the password section and click log on. Once you have logged in, uh, you should see the uh, add your favorite apps on the screen and then and the uh, plus sign there. Click on that to open up the menus of the different um, applications that are available to you as you see here. Depending on your uh, position and uh, role you may have uh, a variety of different uh, applications that you can uh, open um, but uh, at a bare minimum you should see a Metavision on menu um, uh, on the list. Clicking on the uh, Metavision menu will then bring up a list uh, of other uh, Metavision applications that are available. As you may recognize, the Metavision Prod is the uh, icon that you, would, that you used on the, uh, in the previous login uh, instructional section. And uh, in this case, again, you would click on that to, uh, to open Metavision. Once you've clicked on the Metavision Prod uh, menu, you will see a, uh, a shortcut that has been created uh, on the uh, Citric Receiver uh, page uh, that you can then double click in order to open, uh, open up Metavision. As well, you can see that a um, folder has been created on the desktop uh, for Metavision. And if you open up that folder, then a, you'll see another uh, shortcut that has been uh, created 
um, that you can then drag and drop onto your desktop directly to open Metavision uh, from there. So now uh, you can then double click on the shortcut uh, as I've shown you previously and it will take you to the login screen uh, as you should be now familiar with from the uh, previous section. Alright, so next and finally for signing in, uh, one of the advantages of uh, eCritical is your ability to log in remotely and see what's going on, on with any of your patients. So the advantage to this is, you know, say in the middle of the night you get a phone call from the staff, uh, they're worried about a patient, you know, and you can quickly uh, sign into the system and uh, see what's going on uh, and view their chart uh, in live time. This is similar to, uh, to the advantages that NetCare offers uh, and many of the processes for logging in are pretty similar and so should be familiar to you. So to start, you need to have uh, Citric Receiver already uh, downloaded and installed on your computer. Uh, you don't have to do any configuration with it like you did in the previous section. All you have to do is have the program uh, in the background and has been installed. You don't even need to uh, go through the process of installing the My Apps or even uh, logging in for that matter. The um, login through to eCritical through Citrix will actually occur through the web page and you don't need to do anything with the Citrix receiver program itself. Opening any browser that, uh, that uh, is your favorite, such as uh, Chrome or uh, Internet Explorer or Safari, you in the search in the um, in the address bar enter the uh, URL uh, myapps.albertahealthservices.ca. Once the web page is loaded, uh, you will be brought to a login screen. First, you need to enter in your HS uh, username. Um, but in this case, you don't actually need to include the domain. After that, you enter in your Alberta Health Services uh, password. Uh, the AD stands for Active Directory, Directory which is uh, not intuitive, but it's your password that you would use for HS regardless. And then finally, you need to enter in a passcode that you get using the combination of the PIN from your, for your key fob and the number that is displayed on the key fob. If you don't have a key fob um, uh, already issued to you, you'll need to talk to your administrative assistant uh, to uh, go through the process of applying for one. Uh, getting one will be, uh, you find, much more convenient as well because you'll also be able to use it to access NetCare. Once you have entered in your password and, uh, and username and it's successfully logged in, then the next screen you will see is the um, main MetaVision screen, which lists all of the applications that you have at your uh, disposal. Again, uh, depending on your permissions, you may see different icons, but most importantly, you'll see the happy little MetaVision prod icon and click on that to um, to start MetaVision and start the login. If you are prompted to uh, open or save uh, an, a, a small program called an ICA, uh, then all you have to do is just click open to allow the program to, uh, to download and then it will automatically open. And because you have Citric Receiver running in the background already, um, the computer should recognize the, the small application that you just downloaded and start MetaVision. If you get any certificate or security warnings, uh, then uh, you'll just need to click on the permit use or accept certificate or whatever it's asking to allow you to uh, continue with the with the login. Now that that's complete, your uh, MetaVision will uh, start up and you will see the blue screen where you can enter in your username and password and also select the uh, uh, proper unit that you're working in or that you want to view the patients in. Okay, so now that uh, you know how to get into the system, it's time to get into the 
meat and potatoes of actually using the system. And I'm going to start by walking you through how you can look up patient information by starting with the graphic patient list, or short for uh, uh, form is GPL. The GPL comes up by default after you've logged in, um, and the um, and when the patient before the patients are loaded. The GPL is there to provide a graphical way for you to select the patient that you want to look at. The way it's designed is to uh, is in the form of uh, beds that are laid out in a, the same physical location as the uh, as the beds in the IC that you're currently looking at. Uh, each square that you see on the screen represents a bed where a patient is currently residing and includes information such as their their name and their length of stay. Now, what we're looking at right now is the, is the uh, training environment, so there are no patient-specific information uh, to look at, um, and the names are genericized, uh, as you can see, see here. Uh, in order to um, open up any one of these patients, all you have to do is double-click on the form, or on the, uh, on the bed related to the patient, and, uh, and it will automatically open. Another way you can look up patients uh, that may not necessarily be on the uh, GPL, or if you are uh, looking for a patient who's been recently discharged from the ICU or CCU, is to use the patient list. This is found by going to the upper left-hand side, uh, clicking on the patient drop-down menu, and selecting patient list. This will open a dialog box which will allow you to select your patient. You can use the uh, upper portion where you can just scroll through the patients which are organized by their hospital number, name, bed, and admitting physician. The upper uh, title for each one of these columns acts as a sort function and if you click on the the name or sorry the title of the of the column you can sort the the column alphabetically alternatively you can use the search option down on the lower section by and which will allow you to search for a patient by the uh, hospital number last name first name now, anytime you're using this section, you need to be aware of this left-hand side where there are a number of different patient conditions, or statuses rather, that, um, that you need to uh, be aware of. Patients can be either admitted to the intensive care unit, uh, discharged from the ICU, which is called released in this case, and after the patient has been discharged from the intensive care unit, once their file has been reviewed and the quality assurance has been completed, the file is moved into the archive and so the file is considered closed. You can still open the, the patient's file and review it, you just can now no longer make any changes to it. Now sometimes you're, you're going to want to find out uh, how your patient is doing that you may have transferred to another site or you may want to see whether their sites are up to. In order to look up other ICUs that you have access to, uh, you need to uh, change the units by doing what is called change departments. To do this you can simply change the uh, select the patient drop-down menu followed by the select department option. This will open a menu where you can select all of the different uh, ICUs and CCUs that you have access to. Because we are using a training environment, uh, in this case we only have access to two separate uh, uh, units, HS train and P train. Occasionally your patient may have already had their file closed, and as I have described previously, once a patient has had their chart uh, completely reviewed, the file is considered closed. And you may, while you still want to look up information about the patient and you can't change anything in the chart, you may need to find them, and it will um, 
you would then select the connect to archive database in order to uh, find them. If you don't uh, select connect to archive database, you may have trouble locating the patient in the, in the system otherwise. Okay, so I think that's enough for introductions for now. I think it's now it is time to get into the meat of the matter and introduce you to eCritical, starting with the general layout. This is the MD summary page, and this is the default view that you will see when you select a patient and, uh, and they're loaded. As you can see, it is organized a lot like a regular patient chart with, um, uh, with a flow sheet with um, hourly increments up near the top. The top row of the uh, summary form are the buttons that you use in order to uh, open up the f many of the forms that you may need to review or to, uh, to enter in data about the patient. Below that is the tabs. And the tabs are similar to the sections in a paper chart uh, where you can flip between different patient views looking for specific information. I'm not going to go through over each one of the individual tabs uh, in great detail, but I encourage you instead to uh, log on yourself and go through all of them yourself and explore and see what each view has and what works for you and what doesn't. The tabs are largely divided into major patient systems uh, and depending on the size of the screen that you're using you may have to uh, click on one of the arrow keys over here on the right in order to flip to the next set of tabs. Now, continuing on the the uh, the next set of tabs that are available to you include uh, a few that are a little off the uh, the usual uh, format of patient um, uh, systems. First is the lab tab, which uh, provides a, a list of all of the uh, lab uh, tests that have been done on a patient and their results. So it's a uh, uh, it's a one-stop shopping for finding out all the information about a patient and you don't necessarily have to go to alternative uh, locations like NetCare in order to uh, to look up patients uh, lab results. Uh, next is the uh, procedure list which is a list of all of the procedures that have been entered on the patient such as arterial lines and uh, central lines which is um, a great way to quickly look up whether or not a patient is uh, has a, had a line in for a long period of time and is at risk for developing a uh, catheter-related bloodstream infection. Beyond this is the lines, tubes, and drains tab, which is a list of all of the foreign bodies that are in the patient and is helpful in keeping track of what's going in and what's coming out. Next to that is the ICU attending and cardiac attending uh, tabs, which, is a, which shows you a display of all of the um, uh, forms that, that you may need to fill out for your physician documentation and uh, also provides buttons for the uh, to, to get you to the uh, form quickly so that you can fill in anything that that you need to complete. And if you like to see what the nurses are documenting uh, you can always change the layout using this button up here um, but I generally don't recommend that since the uh, the nurses uh, layout is a uh, a lot different than what we're used to uh, and while it makes sense for them it's uh, difficult for for me to follow. The data that the nurses are entering is all captured in the chart and is available for you to view. It's just organized differently to try to meet your cognitive needs and so um, if, if you'd like to change it you're welcome to do so but if you'd like to see a little bit more extensive or, or a little bit more uh, information about what the nurses are or the respiratory therapist or the other healthcare professionals are charting, you can click on the tabs that are not colored blue and you will see specific information um, that, that they may be charting that, that you may be of interest to you, such as uh, the uh, burn chart, for example. Now you may have noticed that the columns uh, on the chart are in hourly increments. This is the default view, but you can change this if you'd like to get more uh, fine-grained information. 
the information that's flowing from the ventilators and the, uh, and the monitors is captured every minute, um, but we show you once an hour so that you can have a you know, 12 hour overview of the patient uh, to give you sort of a general, a, mo a more shift based uh, view of, of what's going on with the patient. If you want to change your uh, change the uh, change the um, uh, resolution of the time, you just sim simply select the uh, click on the uh, time button, the clock button here. It's underneath this, and it will bring up this uh, drop down menu, which will allow you to uh, select whatever uh, increments you'd like to view the uh, um, the columns in. This is particularly helpful when you're looking at patient uh, data in graph format so that you can get, uh, get a little bit more fine detail um, use, when you're using the graph. Now while the one hour increments are default, you don't have the complete overview of the patient and if you want to uh, move forward and backwards in time through the patient's chart, uh, you select these groups of arrows here to, uh, to move you back and forth. If you select the single arrow, it will bring you one column over, either to the left or to the right. If you use the double arrow, it will take you uh, one entire screen or, or, or um, uh, 12 columns, uh, either to the left or the right. If you select this one, this will bring you to the beginning or end of a shift, which is uh, by default at 7 and uh, 8, uh, 1900 hours. Finally, the, this uh, button will jump you back to the current time, uh, which is, uh, is helpful to use whenever you've been exploring the patient's chart and you've been going back and forth in time through days or, or uh, hours and you just want to get back to where you are currently, you click on this button and it will uh, bring you back to that time. Okay, so the, and the last thing we're going to show you now is how to uh, declutter some of your, your space. Um, you may find when you're reviewing a patient's chart that some of, the, uh, some of the sections are getting in the way, they're not providing any information that you want, and so you want to uh, just get them out of the way temporarily so that you can uh, uh, get a better sense of what's going on uh, in other sections of the patient's chart. Now you do this uh, to to remove a, a a view. All you have to do is click on this uh, this hand icon, uh, and this will bring up a drop down menu for that uh, for that section that you'd like to remove. And if you click on remove this view, it will remove that uh, that uh, temporarily. When you're done, or if you want to uh, bring back that information, you can just click on the refresh button, and it will reset the uh, the views to their default mode. So that's the uh, basic uh, overview of the, of the uh, physician layout. And as I've said before, I really encourage you just to spend some time just exploring the chart and figuring, and figuring out what you like and what you don't like. There are a variety of different display options, including both uh, tabular uh, number-based views and uh, graphical views, if that's, uh, if that's what works best for you. And those are both available for you in eCritical through those tabs. And if you just explore those, you find out what you like and what works for you. Now next I'm going to walk you through the steps necessary in order to chart your procedures. This is an important uh, thing to do when you do a procedure on a patient, such as a central line or an arterial line or a bronchoscopy, because this is the patient's chart of record and this is where you would normally write it in, the, uh, in a progress note. You need to document it here because it's uh, if this is where you're going to look to see where when a line was inserted, you need to actually have put it into the system in order to uh, to be able to find that information. So the steps are are pretty straightforward, and you can usually get a, a procedure charted in like 15, 20 seconds um, without too much troubles. Once you have logged into eCritical. And I can't emphasize this enough. You have to use your login. You cannot just use an open, uh, a, a nurse's open uh, file and, and chart in that because that, that person will then have 
the procedure tagged as them having done it, which is absurd. You have to log in, and if, the patient, if there's not a computer available, you have to log in out somebody and log in yourself so that the, the, uh, the procedure gets credited to, to you specifically. Then all you have to do is click on the procedures button here, and it will open up the procedures form. The procedures uh, form lists all of the forms that have been uh, created in the uh, in eCritical uh, that you can provide. Uh, you can complete procedures on. Um, we've tried to capture everything that you've done for or is available to you, including uh, bedside echoes, um, even paracentesis or arterial uh, arterial line insertions. If there's not a uh, if you've done a procedure and it's not available on this list, um, you can chart it in the Others section, or, and if it's, an, if it's something that you do uh, frequently, then uh, let the uh, uh, support team know, and we can have that, uh, that form added uh, to the procedures list. So what we're going to do today, uh, we're going to do now, is we're going to enter in an arterial line uh, insertion procedure. After clicking on the arterial line insertion button, this form opens up. The first step is to ensure that the date and time is correct. And you need to specifically look at this section here to correct the time if the uh, if it is not currently set to the right time. And uh, all you have to do if it's not correct is just change it to whatever time you did the procedure is it is important that you do this uh, so that and not forget this step because if the uh, if the time is incorrect uh, then the length of time that the that the line has been inserted will be uh, also incorrect uh, next below that are a series of drop down menus uh, that you can fill in starting with the indication and then type of supervision now if you have residents on your service then this section is for them but if you do not, and you're the one performing the procedure, you can skip over this this area. Next below that are a series of uh, of uh, checklists for uh, for patient safety, such as hand hygiene uh, and draping. The uh, there are simple yes no selections, and if you have require any additional information about what they mean by these, you can click on the uh, uh, on the underline section. Uh, uh, label and it will bring up a pop-up menu of for more information. Now this uh, this applies to anywhere else in eCritical where you see an underlined section you it is a hyperlink that you can then open up for additional information. Over on the right hand side is some more details about the procedure such as location, the whether it's a new or a rewire, how many times you tried to do it and then if there were any problems. Once you're done, you click the uh, save and close and the form is then uh, filed away and that's all there is to it. The form is there to facilitate your, uh, your documentation. It's not there to change your practice and you don't have to feel uh, obligated to do things uh, simply because they're on the form. There is no section on this form that is required with the exception of the indications. So you can choose to leave areas blank if you don't, uh, if they're not relevant or you don't wish to document that. So if you're a, a quick documenter, if you would write in the chart, you know, write arterial line inserted uh, first attempt, no problems, then you could just simply uh, reflect that on here with a few quick clicks and then a save and close and you're all done. Okay, so that's it for procedures. Next is the admission forms. Now, every patient that is admitted to an intensive care unit or a CCU uh, is uh, there's some physician-specific information that needs to be captured, uh, particularly to help with uh, determining severity of illness. These are not just there for research purposes. Not some you know some PhD or wonk is uh, in some office and demanding that you collect all kinds of information because uh, they have some you know intrinsic they just want to know you know details about the patient and want to waste your time these admission forms are important because they provide information about the severity of illness for the patient 
and demonstrates to administration uh, how sick the patients are that you're taking care of and the importance of what you're doing. So it doesn't uh, it doesn't help anything if you don't fill in these forms. These forms are are there as a necessary part of what we do so that we can show to others the hard work that we do. Working in the uh, regional sites because most of your sites are a uh, CCU ICU combined, you'll need to select the appropriate admission form that you need to fill in based on the patient's uh, hospital service. So in the upper uh, uh, border of the of the patient's uh, uh, patient's chart, you will see the uh, hospital service listed as either ICU or CCU. If the patient service is unknown, then don't fill in the patient uh, the admission form just yet. This will be assigned by the uh, by the unit clerk. Uh, once the patient has been properly admitted to the ICU or to the CCU. When you see that the hospital services uh, has been uh, selected, you can then proceed to filling in the appropriate uh, admission form relevant for that patient. If the patient is being admitted to the ICU, then the next uh, series of, uh, of slides will walk you through how to complete the ICU admission form. There are two ways to uh, access the ICU admission form. You can either click on the ICU admission button on the uh, top, top button row, or you can switch to the uh, ICU attending MD tab and click on that to open up that tab. If you choose to uh, use the tab and open that up, you'll see you have uh, two buttons that you can select, the uh, MD admission form or the MD daily GCS form that you can, you can click to open up. For now, we're going to focus on the MD admission form. Now the ICU admission form allows uh, pr uh, requires you enter in data in order to capture the Apache uh, severity of illness, the SOFA score, uh, the SAPS2, uh, uh, and the uh, MPM2 uh, severity scores. The admission form is a series of quick uh, yes-no answers and drop-down menus. I'm going to walk you through all of these uh, these steps very quickly and uh, once you've had a little bit of practice with the admission form you'll see that it's actually fairly uh, straightforward to uh, to complete. Starting at the top we need to uh, enter in a uh, GCS and this is a best GCS uh, estimate on the uh, um, in the absence of sedation which may seem a little artificial but um, what, we're, what you're trying to capture from a GCS is whether or not there's any evidence of a neurological injury um, that is contributing to the patient's uh, severity of Ill, overall severity of illness. So, the, um, so while what you do with the uh, GCS is just say, think to yourself, is this patient here primarily for a neurological reason? So for example, um, they have an, a bad pneumonia. If they were walking, talking, and got pneumonia, got sick, got intubated, and then came to the ICU, well, there's nothing neurologically wrong with them. So even though they're sedated on a propofol infusion, um, their GCS is 15 out of 15 if you took the propofol off. Um, if they came into the hospital with pneumonia, but they were delirious, well, then you would score their delirium as, uh, um, uh, as that would be a uh, significant to their overall se uh, severity of illness. So normally, what you would most people when they're delirious, it's their verbal response that uh, that is uh, abnormal. So you would then select a verbal response based on uh, your best estimate of how um, uh, how they were able to respond uh, when they were um, before they were intubated. If the patient is already intubated and uh, so therefore you can't score their, um, their verbal uh, response uh, directly uh, prior to intubation and you don't have access to the information, say for example if they were a transfer, then, uh, then you need to use your clinical judgment and you can see over on this side here a, a quick uh, guide to how you should uh, score somebody's GCS as a 5, 3, or 1 
uh, if they're intubated, uh, and uh, and try and estimate if they were uh, unconscious, if they were uh, if they were off sedation and still intubated, would they be clearly orientated, and would seem to be able to converse, or were they um, if they're responsive, but uh, uh, it's not really certain whether they're quite orientated, um, or uh, you score a one if they're completely unresponsive, even off sedation. The next section is the uh, acute disease process present on ICU admission. This is a, a series of uh, system-specific uh, diseases that impact on overall severity of illness, and uh, these are just simple drop-down menus that you can then just select. If a patient does not have a uh, uh, a specific uh, disease process uh, listed, then you should choose none so that uh, so that each of these form uh, sections are filled in. If you don't fill this uh, this section in completely, uh, then the form will not be complete, and it will uh, uh, it will either error and ask you to complete the information, uh, or eventually you'll be asked by the quality assurance people to uh, to complete the form. So it's important that even if the patient doesn't have something listed in each of these drop-down menus, that you do select uh, none uh, so that there's, uh, and, and make sure that every section is filled in. As has been noted before, if you'll see that the uh, labels for all of these uh, drop-down menus has a underline indicating that it's a hyperlink that you can then uh, click on to get additional information about what, what we mean by those specific uh, ICU processes uh, prior to admission. Next is the uh, chronic health conditions, and this is a s series of simple yes-no uh, uh, questions that you ask on whether the patient has AIDS, on dialysis, chronic heart failure, chronic respiratory insufficiency, cirrhosis, uh, etc. Again, you will notice that there is a uh, each one of these is hyperlinked so that uh, if you are uncertain what they mean by chronic respiratory insufficiency, then you can just select, uh, click on that uh, that's uh, that hyperlink, and it will give you further explanation. Again, as before, you need to ensure that you've filled in yes or no to each one of these uh, so that we're not missing, you don't have any data missing. Now, the, the last section, and probably the most important one overall, is the actual diagnosis. This diagnosis is uh, determined by the uh, uh, the list that is provided by the Apache group, so it's an Apache 2 and 4 uh, specific group. I've partially f I filled in this uh, this area so that you can see how this works. The first step is to select whether or not the diagnosis is an operative or non-operative um, uh, diagnosis. And depending on what uh, diagnosis type you select, a number of questions will then be asked of you. And I've walked you through already these. Uh, first question in this case is, did the patient suffer a cardiac arrest? I've selected no. Then it, it, it then asked me, is the patient's presentation related to sepsis? I've said no. And then I've asked, and then I was asked whether or not the ICU uh, admission was related to a trauma. In this case, I've selected yes. And then I've been asked, did the trauma include a head injury? And then I've selected no. At that point, a drop-down menu appears over on the right-hand side, which allows you to uh, select a list of traumas that uh, that may be relevant. When I've selected the, what the patient's trauma actually was as their diagnosis, the admitting diagnosis uh, s section above is then uh, fills in and the form is now complete. The last thing you have to do then is just simply select the save and close and the form will disappear and you're all done for this. The next set of forms that you may need to fill in are the CCU admission forms. Now it's important to remember that, that you only need to fill in either an ICU admission form or a CCU admission form depending on the patient's uh, service type and reason for admission. You don't need to fill in uh, a, 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 both an ICU form and a CCU form uh, for every patient, just one of the two of them. Similar to the ICU admission form, the procedure for getting to the CCU forms is, uh, uh, is in similar in many ways. First, you can either select the cardiac admission button. Clicking on that uh, will automatically open up the, uh, uh, the, CC, the, the cardiac admission form. Or you can click on the cardiac uh, attending MD tab to open that up. The cardiac attending uh, tab will uh, show you the 
button for the that will allow you to go straight to the uh, uh, CCU admission form that you need to fill in. And also you'll see that uh, if there's a section that has not been completed uh, or a score has not been completed, uh, there's an indication on the right hand side for that. The cardiac admission has a little bit more nuance as the um, a, a number of specific uh, 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 diagnoses have been selected for uh, uh, for to to collect specific information on. Uh, that is the uh, patients who have uh, coronary artery disease or ischemic disease, uh, or are being admitted for heart failure or being admitted for um, a critical illness. Uh, if a patient has uh, one of these conditions, just click on that and it will uh, highlight the uh, button for that individual score that you need to complete. If the patient has more than one cause for admission, such as uh, heart failure caused by a, a myocardial infarction, uh, then you have to click both the ischemic disease and the heart failure uh, 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 checkboxes and then complete the uh, individual grace and effect scores. Under certain circumstances, a patient will have uh, uh, be critically ill as a result of their coronary artery disease, and in the regional sites, uh, that is probably less likely to occur as those patients will likely be transferred to uh, tertiary care for uh, more advanced uh, procedures and treatments. Uh, so there, the Apache 4 score, which is uh, similar to the uh, form that you filled in for the ICU admissions, uh, would then be relevant to fill in. I'm not going to walk through the, the, the process for filling in the Apache score, as I've already done that uh, for the ICU admission, and as I said, it uh, is likely less relevant for, uh, for the uh, regional sites. Uh, but next I'm going to walk you through filling in the uh, GRACE score and the uh, EFFECT scores. Clicking on the uh, GRACE score button opens up the GRACE score uh, form, which uh, uh, provides, uh, asks you for an, a number of uh, uh, different physiological and, uh, and laboratory uh, parameters that need to be filled in uh, in order to calculate the, uh, the GRACE score. Um, what is important to know about these forms is that some of the details are from the uh, admission to the emergency department and not to the ICU. If you uh, if you don't complete this form when the ch patient's uh, emergency chart is uh, readily available to you, you're going to have challenges getting that information because you'll need to then get the paper chart from uh, from medical records. So I strongly encourage you to complete this these scores while the patient is still in the ICU, uh, CCU, so that you don't miss this information. The GRACE score is filled in um, fairly straightforwardly with the uh, heart rate on admission to the emergency department, the uh, systolic blood pressure on admission, and the uh, admitting uh, creatinine while they were in the emergency department. You then can then select the uh, Caleb class, uh, drop down, and then answers a number of questions about whether the patients had a cardiac arrest, they have ST segment uh, deviation, uh, and then a uh, whether or not they had elevated uh, enzymes, either CK or uh, troponin. Once you've completed that form, the GRACE mortality score uh, in hospital uh, is calculated automatically and the mortality risk uh, in hospital is also uh, uh, calculated for you automatically. And then you can just select uh, save and close to uh, complete the, uh, the form. If you select, cl uh, click on the uh, effect score button, the effect score form opens up and again it displays a number of different uh, questions that you need to answer about the patient's age, uh, their admitting, uh, vital signs, some of their blood work, uh, and then some of the uh, some patient past medical history such as uh, dementia, COPD, cirrhosis, and cancer. These, uh, these score, uh, these again are just a series of drop-down uh, menus and yes-no buttons that you need to click. And once you've uh, selected all of those, the effect score mortality and uh, at 30 days and one year uh, is automatically filled in for you. And then again, all you have to do is uh, click on the save and close button to complete the form and, uh, and move on to the, next, uh, uh, to the next task for the day. 
If the patient has been admitted to the ICU side uh, and uh, you've completed the ICU admission form, then a daily task you'll, you will need to complete is the daily GCS. The, this is, the, uh, is necessary to, uh, as the uh, SOFA score, the, severe, the uh, incremental uh, increase in severity of illness uh, score, relies on a daily GCS. Many people have asked why the nurse's GCS isn't uh, isn't sufficient, and uh, in the past this has been uh, reviewed and audited. And what what has been found is that uh, nurses tend to be very literal in their GCS assessments um, that doesn't necessarily reflect the patient's actual condition. So for example, going back to the patient with pneumonia, uh, they're intubated, they're sedated on a propofol infusion, and they're completely unconscious. Um, getting maybe intermittent doses of rocuronium to maintain asynchrony with the ventilator. The nurses will tend to score that GCS as a 3 out of 15, but we already know that the patient doesn't have a neurological injury as a result of their pneumonia. They just have respiratory failure from pneumonia. If we score their GCS as 3, we actually give them a very high severity of illness uh, that's inappropriate for that act for that patient. So, as a result of this of this uh, th this review and these findings, uh, it was decided uh, many years ago that the uh, that the physician really is the best arbiter of the patient's uh, GCS. In order to complete the daily GCS, you need to select the ICU attending. Uh, tab and then there's the go to MD daily GCS button that you have to click. Completing the GCS uh, daily is similar to completing the admission GCS. Uh, just uh, use the drop down menu to, uh, to score the uh, eye, verbal, and motor responses. And then if the patient's intubated uh, using your clinical judgment as, uh, we've, as I've described previously. If, uh, if that's all you have to do for that patient is just today's GCS, you can click the uh, Save and Close button uh, to, to uh, close the form and move on to, uh, to other things that you need to do today. If, there's, uh, if you want to check to see whether you've completed all of the daily GCSs for this patient f up to admission, then you can use the uh, Previous Day and Next Day buttons to move uh, back and forward in time. Uh, in, uh, to check and see. If you see that the uh, GCS has not been completed for, uh, for a specific day, you can then just use the drop-down menu again to, uh, to click those. Uh, in those cases though, when you want to uh, then continue looking back and forward in time, you need to use the Save button so that the form doesn't close on you. Um, if you click the save and close accidentally instead, then you'll just need to reopen the form and uh, and then scroll back and back in time using the previous day button uh, to find the uh, the next GCS that you want to complete. Now, having covered the essentials of completing the required documentation, we have to admit that occasionally we're human and we're going to forget how to, uh, to finish all of our uh, documents. In order to ensure that there is uh, a complete data set available for both uh, research as well as for um, internal quality assurance and patient safety, there are a, a number of uh, data an uh, analysts who are uh, previous nurses who are responsible for reviewing the chart to make sure that all of the essential elements are complete. They will, from time to time, send you an email requesting that you complete some aspect of the chart. Um, and unfortunately, I've been privy to some of their replies that uh, some of our colleagues have sent, and it's, well, frankly embarrassing. These are uh, human beings who have feelings, and uh, it's not their fault if you forgot to do your charting, and they're just trying to do their job. So. You know, try to understand and, and uh, complete the, uh, the request as quickly as possible. Now sometimes there's, uh, it's not yours to complete or somebody else is supposed to do it, in which case just let them know and they'll, uh, they'll move on to find the person who is responsible for doing it. But in saying all of that, um, I can, let's go over how you can actually figure out uh, whether or not you have some missing uh, portions of the chart that you need to uh, complete. 
If you need to quickly check to see if there's any missing documentation uh, for a patient who's in the intensive care unit, uh, all you have to do is click on the ICU attending MD uh, tab and you can see that the below each of the buttons for the admission form and the daily GCS is a uh, red dot. When the dot is red, uh, it means that there's something that is uh, incomplete and needs, needs to be done, and you can just click on the uh, respective button to open that form uh, to fill in that, the required information. And you can see as well for the uh, daily GCS that uh, it'll actually list uh, how many days of daily GCSs are missing and what specific dates so that you can go back and, uh, and find those, those missing ones and, and complete them. For CCU patients, the um, red dot uh, will be present if you have clicked that one of the uh, scores, either the GRACE effect or the Apache uh, forms, have not been completed. And then, as again, it will also show you, uh, give you the button so you can click it and, uh, and select um, uh, for that patient, uh, which uh, open that form so that you can complete the uh, the required documentation. Alternatively, if you want to uh, see a general overview of all of the patients that are in the system that have uh, missing uh, documentation that needs to be completed, you can use the uh, patient list uh, function to to uh, search for that. Uh, this is uh, unfortunately not as clear on this uh, demonstration because of the uh, training environment, um, but there is another uh, video available on YouTube uh, that goes over this in a lot more detail. Suffice it to say that if you look at this center column, uh, which is uh, MD missing documentation, it lists uh, any forms that need to be that still need to be completed for any patient that is currently uh, admitted to the ICU. So you can use the sort functionality to uh, bring up all of the patients that uh, still have some uh, form, either the admission form or the GCS. And then you can double click on the on the patient to open that specific patient and uh, and complete what you need to complete. Again. Um, there is uh, another video available online that gives a uh, much more uh, detailed overview of this uh, this functionality and allows you to find the uh, the uh, any charts that still need to be completed. The last item that we are going to cover today is how to complete the death summary. So, for any patient that dies with in the ICU or your CCU, uh, a death summary needs to be completed. This is uh, this is to take the place of the the uh, written uh, uh, death summary that you uh, would put in the chart, uh, and instead you put it into eCritical. The form has a number of uh, of items that you need to check off uh, just to uh, ensure that that uh, no important items have been missed. Um, and it also saves you from uh, having to fill in the um, uh, writing a progress note uh, on that patient. So in order to fill in the death summary, you need to uh, open the death form. And this is found by clicking on the death summary button in the uh, buttons panel uh, up here at the top. And then this will open up the death form. The first thing you need to fill in on the death summary is the date and time that you're currently uh, filling in the, this form uh, up here at the top. Uh, usually, if you're uh, if you set your uh, uh, if you've opened the, the the patient's chart and then gone directly to the death summary, it should usually be the current uh, date and time. If not, you can just adjust it by uh, clicking on the date and the uh, time section and f and uh, editing it as necessary. The next uh, step is you need to fill in the date and time of death and. There is a function built in here to, to um, try to make it a little bit easier for you. The nurse will often document a uh, time um, and date of no heart rate, which uh, obviously is the patient's uh, time of death, but won't be the official time of death unless you say that that's actually the time of death. 
in order, uh, if the nurse has filled in the no heart rate time in their section of the charting, then that time will appear in this upper uh, box. If you click on this button, it will transcribe that date and time into the date and time of death section automatically for you. Next, you need to uh, fill in the uh, cause of death, and that's uh, similar to the death certificate. You just fill in the uh, most proximal uh, cause of death, and then next, the uh, goals of care at the time of death. The uh, death sort form highlights one other um, nuance to the e-critical environment, and that is that any item that is uh, bolded, such as the date and time of death, goals of care, and autopsy consent, uh, as you can see here, these are uh, uh, required fields that need to be completed before the form can be saved. So the rest of the form, as you can see, is not bolded, and you don't have to complete all of this. If you didn't uh, dictate the discharge summary, you don't have to. Uh, you don't have to necessarily document that. However, if you have and you have the job number, you can you can put it in there for your own record in the event that there's an issue with the uh, with the dictation. You need to check whether a consent uh, for autopsy was requested, um, and if not, it's your your option to choose, to decide if you want to fill in why it was was not requested. Um, and then finally, in this area, you can see the medical examiner section, which is uh, again a required field. You have to say yes or no. Was a medical examiner re required to be notified? Uh, yes or and then were they notified? And then did they accept it? And then the name of the uh, uh, medical investigator who's assigned to the case. The next section below that is the organ and tissue donation. Uh, questions. And again, you can see that there are two uh, bolded uh, uh, questions, tissue donation, donor candidate, and clinical criteria for neurological death met. Both of these, again, have to be completed, uh, have, have to be checked either yes or no, uh, respectively. Um, and then, again, the rest you can fill in uh, as you wish to, uh, to complete the uh, patient's death form. When you're done, click on the save and close form, and that's all there is to it. And that's all there is to it, to eCritical. Um, I hope this uh, overview has been useful for you. And if you have any questions or concerns, please don't hesitate to uh, contact uh, any either of the medical director, either myself, uh, Darren Hudson, or uh, Dan Zugi. Um, if you have any other questions, or you can uh, call the eCritical help, uh, helpline and support and speak to them. The, one of the great values of eCritical is that this is a uh, system that was designed by clinicians for clinicians, and so we are always listening for good ideas and suggestions for changes. It may take some time to get changes through the system because of the large volume of, of suggestions we have to go through, but every, every suggestion that is uh, uh, offered will be seriously considered. If you have any other questions, uh, Please, again, don't hesitate to contact us at any time, and uh, thank you very much for listening.